If you only have a little bit of space to garden in and you want to grow tons of food in that space, then you're going to need to learn how to maximize your space for your garden. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do exactly that. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to Mini Urban Farm, a channel about gardening and homesteading in the suburbs. My name is Veronica and on this channel, I teach people how to garden and homestead in the suburbs and I share my gardening and my homesteading journey with you guys. If that sounds like something you're interested in, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Before we get started, I also want to mention that all of the techniques and the methods I'm sharing with you guys today is something that I implement in my own garden. I didn't always have this information and finding this information and implementing it well is not always something that you can find readily available. That is why I created my new Starting Your Urban Vegetable Garden workbook. It's a 46 page step by step guide so that you don't have to go searching for the information. It teaches you exactly how to lay out an urban vegetable garden for the space that you have on your budget, on your time. All right. Gives you all of these techniques plus so much more and at the end of working through the workbook you have an entire plan for your garden in your space if that sounds like something you're interested in i will leave the link in the description below um, it is currently 50 percent off so you can get that on sale up until it goes live on may 14th um, in a little less than a week now don't forget to check that out now what i'm going to do in this video is walk you through all of the techniques that i am using in this garden it is only 60 square feet of space um, Sometimes I think it's actually a lot more, but nope, it is 30 linear feet this way. All right, all the way to the end there, and it is two feet across, um, making it 60 square feet. So I'm gonna take you through, I'm gonna walk through all of the techniques I'm using for this garden. All right, things that you can implement in your garden today. Um, starting with one of the things that I've just put in um, is I noticed that some of these little leaves here are getting a lot of pests right and this specific damage is cutworm damage um, i wish i had one to show you guys but basically they're like this icky little worm um, and they crawl all over your plants they look a lot like caterpillars and basically they just eat your plants now these are tomato plants all right which means that they have lots of space in between them right this is about one foot between these stems here um, and then i actually planted out something that i know repels cutworms which is thyme all right, thyme is something that they don't like because it has a very strong smell, a very strong odor. Um, so I have some space in between here um, where I hadn't planted any companion plants and I planted this little thyme plant in here. Basically what I did is I took this thyme plant, which is actually super overgrown. Um, it has been growing for quite a while and I don't really water anything. Um, it just in the, in the front of the house. And I took this and I broke off some little stems that had roots growing on them already and I planted them in between all of those tomatoes so you can see one there um, there's smaller ones over here all of this is thyme all right and then I've kind of spread them out so that they're growing um, in between all of my plants and then you can also see these little leaves here popping up in the soil those are parsley so in previous seasons, I've actually found that planting out a ton of parsley in between and under my tomato plants um, around the base actually prevents a lot of cutworms and other pests from climbing up the stems and up the leaves and all of that. Um, that is actually a really good companion plant. Herbs, parsley, basil, things like that are really good companion plants for tomatoes because they give off a very strong odor. So what you want to do in order to find companion plants is look at what you're currently growing and just search companion plants for that vegetable you will come up with an entire list of things that grow well if you're struggling with pest control plant out things that deter whatever kind of pests are on your plants currently or the things that you've seen in the past for example cutworms and my thyme plants all right so plant out things like that if you're looking for your tomatoes to taste better plant out basil if you're looking for you know different types of benefits there are companion plants for so many different types of vegetables that will make other vegetables and other crops grow much better all right plant out with companion plants use the space that is not being utilized under your plants right like the space under my tomatoes was not being utilized at all so use that space to plant out companion plants and you will get twice the harvest and twice the benefits the next one is quite clear in front of me and it is to grow vertically all right you can see these cucumbers are already reaching the top of this i think like five foot trellis or so um it might even be six feet because that fence i think is six feet so instead of just having my raised bed right which 
does grow a ton of food already um, by putting in this little trellis here um, and just allowing these cucumbers to grow up that instead of sprawling along the floor it not only prevents disease it prevents mildew it prevents a whole bunch of stuff but it also allows me to grow things at the base of the plant like more herbs or put these beans way closer than i would have otherwise been able to do if these cucumbers were sprawling horizontally on the floor i've done the same thing over here with my indeterminate tomatoes you can see that they are growing along the back side of the fence now you can see here also this is two linear feet across but really, this tomato plant has one little space over there. These beans are taking up way more than one, one square foot. Um, and then I also have some thyme in there, which I just showed you guys. So really, the tomato plant needs one square foot. But you can push things up um, that benefit it. You can do so much more in this space if the tomato plant is growing vertically and not occupying the amount of space it would have been if you let it sprawl across the floor which brings me to square foot gardening all right i absolutely love square foot gardening because i love being able to calculate exactly how many of these bean plants i can fit into one square feet i know that this little board here is six feet long and i know that i was giving them what six square feet all right because theoretically that needs one square foot so in this six square feet if i use six bean plants times six square feet all right, so six bean plants per square foot, that's 36 bean plants. Or I can even go up to nine, all right? There are definitely um, ways to plant out more densely, which I am going to talk about in just a minute over there with my salad greens, all right? But for the most part, you're able to calculate exactly how much food you can fit if you know your square footage, which you should. So let's come over here to my salad greens, all right? So I was just talking about square foot gardening, but you can see there's like a million little um, mustard plants in here and the kale seems like it's um, just kind of scattered here and I really can't even tell how much arugula I have in here. Now, with salad greens and other things like herbs and, you know, smaller seeded kind of things, um, I don't really follow square foot gardening because they just don't require that level of care, all right? Basically, I take the entire packet and I just sprinkle it on top of the soil and this is what grows, all right? You can do that with half the packet, a quarter of the packet, whatever you want. I think this is probably about half a packet um, or even less. I know that's half a packet and I think this is actually half a packet as well. You can see it is growing in really fast and it looks absolutely beautiful. If I take these, I can definitely harvest arugula for baby greens tonight for dinner um, and it's just a really good way to grow tons of food in a very small space now you don't want to do this for everything because if you do this with tomatoes <laughs> they will not survive if you do this with beans you can probably get away a little bit more with it because they're currently growing at like seven or eight or nine per square foot but things that require a lot of space we're talking eggplants zucchini um, tomatoes things like that you cannot plant out densely but things that have very, very small seeds usually, right? Things like salad greens and herbs and even carrots, right? You can always go back and thin them later, right? If I notice that some of them are not doing well, for instance, um, you have this little one over here that is just not really growing. I can come in here and just completely rip this out and thin them, all right? And I still have a ton more. Things like that are completely okay to plant densely. By using these techniques, you're going to be able to plant a ton more food in the space that you have. Like I said, I'm, I only have 60 square feet right now to garden in. Hopefully very soon when we have our dream home coming into permit very close um, to getting those permits, we'll have a lot more space. But for right now, I have 60 square feet and I've been making the most of it by growing tons of food in this space using companion planting, vertical gardening, um, square foot gardening, and planting out densely. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out in the description below my Starting Your Urban Vegetable Garden workbook. All right, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.